Easy, James here, and I uh, haven't done a video for a while, and I need a haircut. Two good reasons to do a video, hey? And uh, before I start as well, Mark, you've left your glasses in my car again, because you know I'm just going to have to put them on and make a knob of myself on YouTube. Oh man, how can you see? And these things are like, oh, I can't see anything, all I can see is like a blur. How do people wear these things, man? Nah, that's too weird. Oh man, you've screwed my eyes up. I haven't done a video for a while, it's just because I've been busy and I've been really knackered, I just haven't really been up for it. Um, so I've got to start getting through some of my video requests though, because the list is kind of long. There's quite a few uh, video requests to get through. I've got to print them all out and I'll show you. It's about four sheets of A4, seriously. My email box is jammed and most of those are video requests. A lot. Anyway, um, most of the time it's sort of questions about techniques, turntables and stuff like that. But lately I've been getting a lot of questions, people asking how particular things work. Like for example there's a few people asking how a CD player works, some people asking how uh, a turntable works, that kind of thing, hence the video today. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just get through some of those quickly. Um, so today I'm going to explain to you how a turntable works. Not necessarily like every part of how a turntable works, but what I mean in particular is how you get sound from a piece of plastic, basically. So how vinyl works more than how a turntable works. Because, well, they're all different. Some are direct drive, some are belt drive. Just don't even go there. All you really need to know is how sound comes from a disc of plastic, basically. Uh, now, you might already know this, but Sometimes it's nice, even as a DJ, you don't really have to know how it works. As far as you may want to know is, if I do that, sound comes out of it. But it might help you as a DJ if you kind of understand how the sound comes from that piece of plastic. So, I've got lots of paper and a couple of pens, because I know I'm going to run them out. And we're going to do my all-famous crazy doodle time. So I'm going to move the camera and we'll start doodling. Right now you have to bear with me because I'm no Van Gogh by no stretch of the imagination. I'm actually quite crap at drawing so you have to bear with me. But um, what, what I'll start off with is the piece of vinyl itself. Okay, Now obvious, we all know that vinyl has grooves in it. Okay, Now if I have an attempt at drawing a piece of vinyl here and I... Oh man that sucked. <laughs> That's not a piece of vinyl. That looks more like a mushroom. Right, anyway. so. Along a piece of vinyl, you have a continuous groove that goes from uh, beginning to end. Okay. Now, if you was to look at that groove, you might think it's actually just a straight groove, a curl. Okay. But if you look closely at that groove, you will actually see, and I mean with the naked eye, you can actually see that the groove isn't actually perfectly smooth. It's actually kind of jagged, like that. And if you look even closer than that, I'm talking like microscopic you can see that the edges of the groove are actually sort of this shaped and both sides of the groove and let's say that's the center of the groove there you can see both sides of it is actually like completely jagged and weird now this edge here kind of replicates a sound wave okay but a lot smaller now if you've used like audacity or you've seen a sound wave on a computer kind of you know looks like that kind of thing um, you'll know what that looks like but basically this the edge of this tries to replicate that um, radio radio wave that sound wave sorry so uh, your needle would sit in the groove here okay now what happens is when it goes along the groove the needle is sort of rocked from side to side like that okay so that's kind of like that's how it works really it's just intense vibration just vibrates the needle okay now on the end of the needle depending on what type you got whether it's spherical elliptical whatever you know depending on what it will look like you've got the needle itself and then you have like a little sticky bit that goes on the end of right now that piece there is a cantilever okay basically it's got a fixed point on it like that and then on the back of it you have a very small magnet okay so it's kind of like the tone arm on your turntable, okay? Whereas it moves backwards and forwards like that, and it's got a fixed point which it moves on, okay? So it's, yeah, it's kind of like the tone arm, but very small. Now what happens is when the needle goes backwards and forwards in the groove, it's shaken from side to side like that. Now inside the head shell of your needle, depending on whether you've actually got like, you know, head shells like that, where you'll have like your head shell itself, and then you've got the little plate bit with the handle on. 
and see what I mean I'm crap at drawing and then you've got the little wires there okay so you've got a head shell like that or whether you've got one that's called a concord needle which kinda looks like this except like less gay kinda like that except the concord cartridges look more like DJ cartridges rather than a floppy penis like that one looks like anyway either side of this magnet you'll have two coils like this and the pen is crap and it's running out Okay, so you'll have a coil either side. Now, it depends what needle you're using. Some of them have coils in different shapes and they all come in different styles and stuff. But basically what it is, you've got the magnet there which sits in between two coils. Now, bearing in mind, this is like really small. It's in the end of the, the cartridge, so it's like tiny. And what happens is, when the needle is rocked backwards and forwards, that magnet vibrates in between those two coils and generates a really small electrical charge and when I say small I mean tiny it's actually about five millivolts okay um, that's about average now that's about 300 times less than the power that's generated from the battery in this watch so that is absolutely tiny so that is why you can't plug a phono turntable straight into an auxiliary socket or something like that because the signal is simply too small for your amplifier to efficiently amplify without having a preamp okay so you understand that bit if I've explained it well enough so now we need to understand why turntables need a preamp okay now the cartridge itself like I say only generates like a tiny current now if you were to look at the uh, the wave generated from a cartridge it would look something like you know that now that is pretty small I don't know if you can actually see that this pen is really crap there you go so you've got a small wave there now if you was to compare that and I mean that's like the kind of wave that comes from you know your average turntable if you was to compare that with something say I don't know a CD player or maybe I don't know your iPod or something like that the wave would kind of be like this in perspective so you can see it's quite a lot bigger and if you was to compare that with the kind of wave that your amplifier would generate to drive your speakers it would probably be something like that so you can see that a phono signal is actually quite small in comparison to other signals so you need to amplify that before you well amplify it if you kind of understand that so this is why you need a preamp now your mixer will have a phono preamp built into the phono channel on it so that it will amplify the signal before it goes into your amp or anything like that and to make that work you need one of these okay now some of you may recognize this and straight away know what it is you might have seen one before and you may recognize it as a chip some of you may think it's a weird spider with silver legs but basically what this is this is called an operational amplifier uh, more commonly known as op amp for short and basically as the name suggests exactly what it is it's a small amplifier and I mean these are used from everything from phono preamps, mic preamps, mixers uh, LED volume displays your computer will even contain probably one or two of these in its sound card although the ones on your computer sound card would be these same thing, smaller outline and its surface mount. Now if you used to look at one of these op amps as a schematic symbol, yes I've changed pen because that one kept running out, it would look like that. Now let me just quickly draw uh, a schematic for what a phono preamp looks like just in case you're interested, okay, but I'll do it quickly. So let's imagine this is your coil coming from your cartridge, okay? So that's one of the coils. There we go. Now that to you might look pretty complicated, but that's just a basic simple phono preamp. Now to put this simply, okay, let's imagine all of this was inside this square rectangle random thing, okay? Now your little signal here coming from your phono turntable goes in one side and it comes out a bigger signal, not quite big enough to drive your speakers or anything like that but big enough so that it can be efficiently amplified so imagine you've now got your amplifier an even bigger signal and that signal is now big enough to drive your speaker so there you go, I hope that was easy enough to understand 
Uh, if you've got any questions about it, just bung a comment below. So there you go, I hope this video has been a help, and uh, thank you for watching. Nice one. Practice and enjoy.